What's going on everybody and welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial. In this tutorial what we're going to be doing is introducing the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi, how to use them and all that. So what we have here is one breadboard, two male to female jumper wires, one resistor, the resistor should be somewhere between like 300 and 1k ohms, and then an LED light, this one's yellow, it really doesn't matter what color you choose though. And basically what the GPIO pins do for us is they allow us, GPIO stands for general purpose input output, and it allows us to either send out a signal, either high or low, so just a binary signal out, or receive a signal back in, and there's all kinds of ways that we can manipulate that to have a lot more um, dynamism to it. Now, the GPIO pins are labeled for us, and I'm going to pull up this image from Adafruit, and these are the GPIO pins above that kind of gray line. That's the older pies. And if you have one of the more later versions, you'll have all 40 pins. And um, you can go all the way down there to, towards the bottom of that image. Now, the way these are oriented, if we go back to here, it's as if it's the same way this pie is oriented in this image or this video right here. So um, that translates directly to these pins here. So um, the top leftmost pin is 3.3 volts, and then the two top rightmost pins um, are your 5 volt outputs. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to rig up a simple uh, LED light that will just turn on when we ask it to via our program. To do that, and to create the circuit, we're going to be using this breadboard here. So this is breadboard. The way that it works is basically all on these edges here. Um, sometimes you'll have like two rows, and breadboards will look a little different, but they're generally going to look something like this. And these are connected um, vertically, basically. So um, by column, I suppose you could say. And then you've got uh, these middle bits. Each of these are connected by row. So for example, let's say um, this, this spot here is connected to this one, is connected to this one, and so on. But these are not directly connected to these. You'll connect them yourselves. And then like this one, this closest one, I suppose, um, this one is not connected to this one or this one, but this one is connected to this one. So to help you understand that even further, I've just kind of circled um, or squared <laughs> um, some examples of ones that are already connected. But of course, you can connect them yourself with jumper wires or we'll use the resistor to do it and, and so on. And then even the LED bulb we'll use. So. Uh, what we want to do is wire this all together. So here's a quick diagram of the actual um, wiring that we're going to do. Now, this is not a real wiring diagram by any means. Um, but I know whenever I was first starting out, the last thing I wanted to see was a wiring diagram. I wanted something a little more obvious to me. Um, so basically what I've done here is this green is the Raspberry Pi. The, the filled in boxes by color are the actual jumper wires. So black to black and so on. Um, and then the resistor is this like blue blob and the LED is right here and it's labeled and all that. So it's just like super simple. So um, coming back to our Raspberry Pi now, let's go ahead and connect everything. And let me just pop up the uh, diagram there. So it's actually kind of a little hard to see if your screen's not very big, um, at least that yellow. So the yellow here is um, basically six pins down and then three pins down for the, the ground. So um, if you want, you can take a screenshot of this. Also, you can go to the text-based version of this tutorial um, and save this image. It's always good to have an extra one around. Uh, so anyway, yeah, ground here, the third pin down on the right. And then we'll also be using GPIO pin 18. Also, just for the record, these are the Broadcom names. Um, it's a little unfortunate. The, the Raspberry Pi has like the board names for the pins. And that's just like the physical location, basically, of the pin. You can use the board name pins or the Broadcom names. And the Broadcom, that's the processor that we're using. Um, that's you know, the actual chip. That's how it recognizes those pins. That's the name of that pin according to the chip. So we're going to use the Broadcom names. OK, so, uh, so let's go ahead and wire this up. Um, just going to connect here. This, this blue cable will, uh, will be my ground. So we'll go ahead and um, connect everything up. Nothing's plugged in, so it doesn't really matter the order that we do this. Um, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and connect ground here. And then the female end for uh, the, the actual LED here. And then ground will connect right here. And then we'll use the resistor. here and there. Uh, 
And then next to the resistor will be the, uh, the LED bulb. And now one thing to take note of, let's see if you can see that, you notice that there's one end that's longer than the other. Not all LED bulbs are gonna have that, but when you do have that, the positive end is the longer end. So since this is the ground end, we actually want the negative end to be on that side. Um, so we'll go ahead and plug that in. If for whatever reason your circuit doesn't work, flip them around, you probably just made a simple mistake. Um, otherwise the bulb could be burnt out. There's all kinds of reasons why it wouldn't work or your circuit's bad or whatever. Um, okay, once we've done that, now we can just plug in for the actual, um, ooh, my resistor's kind of touching. We don't want them to be touching. You don't want metal to metal there. Now in reality, you'd, you'd actually trim that resistor down so it wasn't uh, sticking up so much. But yeah, make sure the resistor isn't directly touching, say, the positive end of the, uh, <laughs> the GPIO cord. Anyway, um, or the LED rather. Okay, so I've got everything hooked up and again, it's according to this diagram. If you need more pictures, um, I've got some better pictures of the actual physical wiring of this thing in the text-based version. So if you're still confused or whatever, um, definitely check those out. Um, but yeah, so now let's go ahead. I'm gonna plug in the Raspberry Pi. We're gonna fire it up and then we're gonna get to the actual code to make this light turn on and off. All right, with the Raspberry Pi all connected, turned on, I'm in the terminal via SSH. Let's go ahead and change directory to the desktop. And also let's just make sure we've got rpi.gpio. Chances are you already have it, but let's just make sure. So sudo app-get install python-rpi.gpio. And we already have it, so it's no problem. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do is, uh, we're gonna nano LED example.py. And now what we're gonna go ahead and do is import RPI dot all caps GPIO. Now mind the caps, that's capital R, capital P, lowercase i, dot all caps GPIO. Um, import that as GPIO. Then we're gonna also import time. And then now what we're gonna do is gpio.setmode gpio gpio dot bcm. So the bcm is short for Broadcom. The other option is, if you wanted, board names, but I'm gonna use the bcm, the Broadcom names, because um, I just think it makes more sense, and we just wanna make sure we're using the same names as, um, as we think we are. <laughs> Anyways, you wouldn't wanna mess up the pins. So. Now that we've done that, we're ready to set up the pin. So like, like I was saying before, our pin that we connected to is pin 18 for, um, let me pull it up here. So we connected to that third from the top right ground. You could have connected it to any of the grounds. It's not a big deal which one. But our actual pin that's gonna send an output signal to that LED bulb to actually turn it on is going to be GPIO pin number 18. Again, you could have plugged it into any of the other GPIO uh, ports. It's not essential that you do the exact same port, uh, or pin rather, as I do. Anyway, uh, what I'm gonna do now is GPIO.setup, and we're gonna set up pin number 18, and we're gonna call that a GPIO.out. It can also take an input, so it could be GPIO.in. Now what we're gonna do is GPIO, whoops, all caps, GPIO.output, and we're gonna to output to pin 18, and we're gonna output a high signal. It could be GPIO.high or low. Those are the two signals that you can output from your GPIO. So we're gonna do um, high, and then we'll go ahead and time.sleep, we'll do five seconds, and then we'll do uh, GPIO.output, again, to pin 18, GPIO.low, so a low signal. And then when we're all done, let's go ahead and run GPIO.cleanup, and that should be everything that we need. So let's go ahead and exit that, save, yes, cool. Let's go ahead and run python led example.py. And let me just pull my screen over here just so I can make sure that shows up on camera, no problem. Go ahead and run that. Hard to tell with that yellow light, but it is on. And I think we have five seconds, yeah. And now it's off. So hopefully yours turned on and off, um, like mine did there. Okay. So that's just like a really quick 
basic example of using the GPIO. That's one way to send out a value. Now what we're gonna do is use that distance sensor to actually input, bring back in some data from our from a sensor. So that's what we're gonna be doing in the next tutorial, a little slightly more complex setup, but it's not too bad. So that's what we're gonna be doing in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.